All right. Hello and good to IT events. Thank you all for being here. We are lucky to be joined by the very distinguished Sean Jackman, who is the founder and CEO of and tremendous individual in the innovation space of mobile and technology. But uh, something that a lot of us are actually not dealing about, which is uh, the world of healthcare. Uh, so he's a disruptor. He's a genius. He's very, very humble. So I'm sure he won't say that about himself, but I'm very happy to say that about him. Uh, Sean, I would love to hear a little bit about your industry, what's happening with the future of wireless for healthcare delivery organizations. Well, we're going to hear a lot about that, actually, uh, but hopefully in context and with your help and with everybody's help through through questions. Uh, I uh, <clears throat> can talk about the talk about my journey uh, through this and hopefully that uh, will hopefully some lessons and some things that you can take away from that. <clears throat> All right. So I called the can we see my screen. OK, thumbs up. OK, very good. Um, so I'm, I'm using my, my corporate, um, PowerPoint background. So forgive me. I tried to block out all of the corporate stuff, but it's going to be in, in there a little bit, but it just, uh, it's a little, a little more, more appealing than a white background. And if I, if I picked up a blank one, um, so I've been, you know, doing specializing in wireless for, I don't know, a little over 15 years or so. Uh, and, and I've, focused that energy in healthcare specifically. Um, I've worked for manufacturers, I've worked for um, like system integrators, you know, the people that maybe resell it and you do services, you know, go along with it. And before starting Clinic Mobility in 2015, I was with Kaiser Permanente. Um, somebody may be uh, uh, members of Kaiser. So I was there for about seven years and I'll have some good stories along the way here. I've, uh, I published a couple books in the wireless industry. I guarantee you haven't read them. They are uh, as uh, boring as geeky as it gets. But uh, you know, <laughs> for those in the industry, uh, it, it was the first uh, design book uh, to be uh, to be developed um, as our you know industry in our that industry, the wireless industry, is pretty young, right? So a lot of firsts. Um, and and also in security. I've done as much as I can in the industry as a whole to try to, you know, be part of a, associations and trying to create, um, you know, regulations and guidance to to improve. Um, really, the journey that I'm on is how do how do you create reliability with wireless? Um, I bring this up more or less just. You know, so you know the the bend that um, where my focus is. So I think the context is helpful. Um, small company, but uh, really good at what we do. Um, super specialized, and that'll be uh, a little foreshadowing for uh, for what I wanted to what I wanted to share. And just real quick, what I would love, uh, if it's appropriate, and if you feel compelled to, is is to go off mute and to uh, ask questions or, uh, you know, clarifications. And actually I'll keep that. I see the chat. Uh, so I can try to keep that up on the side here too, but I, I'd love interruptions. Uh, this is for you, not me. Uh, this is a pleasure to, <clears throat> to be able to speak to um, some people that are, you know, looking ahead, you know, to uh, some amazing careers and, uh, if I can do in part a little bit of wisdom, which usually is a compilation of a bunch of mistakes that you've refined to, uh, to make them, uh, to make them work. And if I can impart any, anything, uh, it's truly an honor. So again, <clears throat> love, uh, would love a dialogue and, and Jake, keep me, uh, keep me focused back to the, I think the curriculum of the class and, uh, you know, so I don't go off on, on left field in these tangents. Fair? Okay. That sounds wonderful. We, we definitely want to hear, we want to hear your journey. We want to hear what's going on. We want to understand where. Industry. Perfect. 
And uh, you, you work in a particular sector that a lot of us don't know about. Yeah, in fact, uh, um, very few people do, <laughs> and which is uh, kind of fun to talk about sometimes. All right, so I these were my goals as I was thinking about it, and Jake and I talked a bit about uh, what would be appropriate. Um, and you know, my kids are uh, you know twenty one, nineteen, and eighteen. Uh, I would love to be able to to talk to them about some of the stuff, but I'm their dad. They don't want to listen to me, right? <laughs> Those of you who are old enough to have kids, uh, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. Uh, yeah, you all, I'm sure, have read this by now. So let me go on to the go on to the next part. Maybe there we go. So let's talk about what an expert is. So I went through this journey, and you know, I have this certification that's an expert. Um, but what does that mean? And this is how Merriam-Webster defines it. It's uh, one with a special skill or knowledge representing mastery of a particular subject. Um, this is how I've come to learn. What an, what an expert really is. And I stole this phrase from somebody who I actually referred to as an expert and super talented guy, um, also uh, very, very humble. Uh, but it's somebody who's learned so much about something that they realize how much they don't know. And think of the, the humility in this too, right? And life is... Uh, life's a journey. I mean, it's so fun to, to, to gain such specialized knowledge in an area, but my goodness, it kind of never ends. Like you, it's like you keep digging and, there, and there's more and more at, as you go. And it frankly doesn't matter the topic. Uh, some of you, you know, I'm sure think wireless is easy, right? You put it at home, but the more you get to use it, you're like, gosh, why is this not working? And when you deploy things at scale, they get very complex, but it could be, Woodworking, electrical engineering, uh, graphic design, how to do storyboarding, you know, doing videos. Um, it it's, doesn't matter the topic. <clears throat> so let me share a perspective um, how I started in my career. And, and I'm calling it the general generalist to a specialist. Because you can see where, where, you know, somebody's you see from my background that wireless is is kind of a you know niche thing. Wait, that's all you do? Yeah, and in fact, I only do it in healthcare. <laughs> on the most part, there's uh, there's exceptions, right? But that's where my focus is, uh, and you'll learn a little bit about why that is. So the generalist. Uh, when I was in my career, in starting my career, I went to um, to college right out of right out of high school to Cal Poly for computer science and. Um, it's always very kind of drawn to, to technology. So I, and I also thought there was a nice future in it, of course. Um, good thing I was right. Uh, so, I mean, I probably would have enjoyed doing all kinds of other things, but, you know, I had to pick something and uh, the reality is people change the majors. So, you know, give it a shot, right? That, that's what I did. Um, it's such a broad area, right? There's so many ways to, you know, areas that you could, you know, be become a specialist in, in or, or have domain knowledge in technology. And I kind of did, um, I had kind of had a really wide focus. Um, I was fortunate enough to get hooked up with some of the Ziff Davis publishing, you know, um, magazines back when magazines were a thing, right? <laughs> like PC Computing Magazine, uh, you know, Mac user, you know, uh, P uh, you know, there's a long list of those magazines that, you know, were pretty heavily read and there was a test lab and I got involved uh, with that uh, fairly young age, you know, to get some income while I was paying for school. Uh, somebody there brought me into a radio show. Uh, it was called On Computers Radio. Uh, it's kind of fun. Did that for about six years, but in the, in the, you know, kind of brought me in all these different areas. And then, of course, school, you, you just learn about them like a broad range of things. And I, you know, had my own little uh, things that I was kind of interested in. Started in a uh, career um, and I was kind of like a, uh, uh, I'm botching the phrase, but, but I was like kind of a master of nothing, right? Because <laughs> I, I was a, I was a generalist and, and uh, 
I felt I was pretty good. Some people thought I was pretty good at some at some of this stuff, but um, I was like kind of skin deep across, you know, the a whole bunch of areas. I was, you know, attracted to to certain areas. Maybe I knew a little bit more, more in some versus others. Uh, and I and I found that to be, frankly, a limitation at some point. The limitation was, what's Sean, what's your distinctive competency? Uh, and what, I mean, why should I hire you versus somebody else with some general computer knowledge? And how do you put that on paper to, uh, in a resume or something to, to say, well, I could really do this well. Well, I could do a lot of things where I thought, I thought pretty well, but, you know, wasn't really known for, for something in particular. So, uh, it, and it was actually to a point in the career where, you know, where the job market got a little tough and it was harder to, uh, company I was working for, you know, went out of business. And, uh, so you just find yourself on the street, you know, for whatever reason and, you know, become, and it was kind of a reflection point for me <clears throat> where I thought that, um, having a specific focus would, uh, would have put me to the top of the list, so to speak. So I began this kind of like with the picture here is kind of this funnel approach. I, I really started to narrow it down and, and get more specific. And, and I thought about, you know, I've always been compelled to, you know, jobs they are fine. You know, we you know, all need them at some level, but I wanted more than that. I wanted to make a mark somewhere. It's hard to make a mark just being a generalist. Right. Um, and the more specialist you get, the more people see you for that specialization. And, you know, I'm going to give some stories and hopefully um, that'll mean more to you um, what that's about. So I was gravitated towards healthcare specifically. Why? Um, some of it was objective uh, through a process of elimination. Um, but there was a real, where I felt like a calling, uh, that spoke to, you know, we're talking about making a mark, gosh, you know, what an opportunity to do that for, in a, in an environment where people, you know, are vulnerable and need help. And gosh, if I can apply my technology skills in that healthcare vertical to make clinician jobs easier, to maybe do solutions that, that would, um, kind of fulfill, you know, in the, like an inner desire, you know, that I have. So that was my meaning, uh, where I felt, um, and when I, so I was doing it for, as like I said, manufacturers, you know, resellers. So I would, uh, when you work for a reseller, you kind of get exposed to, or a manufacturer, you're, you're going into a retailer one week, you're going into a warehouse and next week, going to a, um, a college, you know, doing, doing things like that. And then, you know, healthcare. So I had a sampling, um, and it's wonderful to get that sampling. It's sometimes you just jump in the stream and see where it takes you. But when I, I kept gravitating, you know, towards the healthcare side, um, when I got the job at, at Kaiser, you know, it's interesting, uh, a little sidebar here. I had worked for, um, some smaller companies and I had, uh, this isn't the first company I started with clinical ability. So I've, I've, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, it didn't have the scale of like, uh, advertising and marketing, right. To, you know, to make a big name, like people say, wait, what's the company name you work for? <laughs> so when you're small, you could do wonderful work. Um, let's say it's even, it's at least equal, but maybe for the argument's sake, let's say it's even better than like maybe what a big company is doing. Um, fantastic, but it doesn't get recognized. Um, what was interesting about, uh, so I, I spent a whole bunch of time in the wireless industry and that's where I got the certifications. I actually did all of the, uh, actually the first book, you know, even before taking a job at Kaiser. But um, one of the things I wanted to impart to you all, um, small companies are fantastic. They offer, they offer, um, you, you know, you can really do a lot of things, but having a bigger company, uh, attached to my name and what I was doing all of a sudden it was like, Oh, 
oh, well, it's the same. I'm doing the same stuff the same way. Uh, it was it was really interesting to me, where you can basically be somewhat unrecognized. Um, and, and I would see these people that frankly stunk at what they did, and because they had a title, you know, at, at one of the bigger companies, they're like, oh, you know, well, well, well that's great. <laughs> well, if you, if those of you that haven't worked in the corporate world. Um, you know, the bigger companies is where most people go to retire, in my opinion, right? There's plenty of exceptions, but uh, it's usually where good work is not done because it's like our government, you know, isn't the epitome of like um, streamlined, right? It, there's so many people and, you know, uh, decision makers and uh, ranks of management, uh, but uh, it's interesting is my point around getting the chance to work for a big company is sometimes a, you know, a nice check on the resume. And then let's talk about maybe other ways to harness that. <clears throat> so what I, um, the responsibility I had, I, I had um, to deploy wireless at, uh, at every Kaiser facility. And those of you who don't know the size of Kaiser, um, it's a pretty big company. If it was like a public company, it would be like a pretty high, like on the, you know, probably the top 200 companies or so. Um, I'm just a ballpark based on revenue. I think about, I think they about 70 or 80 billion dollars last year. So it's not a small, not a small organization. So I had a thousand buildings I had to put wireless in. Some of these buildings were, you know, pretty modest, but my goodness, some of these things were like monsters, like campuses, like many buildings on a, on a campus. Um, the, <clears throat> with that responsibility, um, there's something I've learned about being successful is you never do it by yourself. You always want, uh, you will be much more successful uh, with a team of people. What I did was um, really focused by collaborating with the manufacturers. So let's say, you know, Cisco Systems or Aruba Networks, those of you in that area, but, you know, there could be, you know, Microsoft and, you know, other big names. I started working very intensely with um, with them and engaged them because I, I remember when I was at the manufacturer, customers were I often found not very engaged, and I thought to myself, "When when I you know get that opportunity, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a voice and I'm gonna engage with them because I think I can get more out of because I felt that I had more to offer." when I was with the manufacturer, if I could just get a customer to engage with me at the right level, well, okay, here's my chance. And um, I mean, it helped that I was in the Bay Area and I could just go down to San Jose for, you know, Santa Clara for, a, you know, on a Tuesday afternoon, because I felt like it, right? Um, that that certainly helped, but now with, now with Zoom and much like you're learning now, uh, borders, you know, distances don't matter. <clears throat> I really, um, focused on providing feedback to the products and being a voice of the customer and by the voice and we're going to get more into this later but specifically what is missing in 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 their products that they're bringing in um what's not working right let's work together uh we just we both need to make this work right they're they need it to work i want to work so i want to get through this and get on to the next thing so you realize your incentives are aligned. Being that voice to them, I got to tell you, it became like they started, they realized that I, like I'd, I had opened up this door. And they realized that when they had questions that they couldn't answer internally, you know, they're in a meeting, um, they have a whiteboard, um, they're working on a product, they don't know what it's like to be at the customer, most of these folks. I mean, they, they know how to, you know, make a product, right? But they just don't understand what it's like to walk in the shoes. Uh, so when I started doing that, I, then I started getting the phone calls like, hey, uh, you know, we're trying to deal with the decision. Can we, can we get some feedback? And it just started this engagement. And it's and it happened with medical device manufacturers, with uh, software vendors, it worked you know, with the infrastructure manufacturers, the security companies. So this, uh, and... Think about what that does. 
uh, when they were in their meetings back in their offices, they said, hey, I talked to Sean the other day. You know, this is, you know, he, he had some interesting feedback. And here's what he, so you, you, you're, um, that engagement, and just by the fact that you think that, you know, most people think, well, you know, they should, they probably know this. I, I don't have my, that much to offer. My goodness, yes, you do. Right? And it's just to share that information and to create, um, you know, because it creates a dialogue and it really helps to propel your engagement and, and frankly, your, um, your relationships. Uh, you know, the old stories. Right. The more that uh, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. Um, I've got uh, plenty of stories to validate that, but uh, and I'm <clears throat> I'm assuming many of you do as well. But the key is here is the action resulted in recognition, and I wasn't looking for it. It it was um, a wonderful consequence, and <clears throat> all we're trying to do is to work together to achieve a common goal. But I picked up the phone, I sent the emails, and I engaged with them. And I helped them, you know, learn and, and, and understand what healthcare needed, for example. And, uh, and guess what? Um, th when the product came out, it actually solved, solved my problems in, versus me complaining why your product doesn't solve the problems. So in a lot of ways, I was actually making my job easier because I was getting ahead of it, right? And kind of letting them work for me in a lot of ways. In the end, they won uh, because they were making something that was more appropriate for a market. But the action resulted in, 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 in recognition. It's just, it's an artifact from that. So you have a, you, you have a powerful voice. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, you can do it in a, in a very subtle way um, or respectful way. Uh, some people have... Uh, uh, you know, have thin skin, right? There's, you got to size up the person you're talking to and, and see how to deliver that the right way. Um, but, but here's an example. So I, you know, I had to cover a thousand buildings. Um, I wanted to do it one way. So I had, I, I, John, I, let me ask, can I ask, please, ask you a question here? So, uh, so some people here know Kaiser and some people don't. I've, I've lived in this, in California for a very, very long time. And just for the folks who are listening, think of Kaiser almost like a uh, Google or Facebook of, of healthcare. They're a monster. So they're a monster player in the industry. Um, so when Sean's talking about doing mobile for a company that in many ways really is, you know, the industry of healthcare is so far behind in technology. Yes. Right, John? Like, yes. like, the, like, the, like you know, there, there are massive opportunities in this industry. Sean is in certainly one area of a huge opportunity, but healthcare as a whole is very behind. A lot of it of security concerns of about people's information because a lot of medicine has a lot of personal details about people so there 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 is that aspect of it but this is a massive industry and kaiser is a huge player in that industry so i'll i'll let you go back to it sean but i just wanted people to understand the the massive amount of difficulty of getting a group of people who are really not knowledgeable so they don't know what they need. They don't know what they want. And you have to navigate that. Yeah. So there's a complicated web that you're trying to deal with. So I'm going to put myself on mute, but I just wanted people to be aware of that part. Yeah, I love the interruption and the dialogue. Any other, if there's any other comments too, you know, please. Uh... I, yeah, I have a question. Hi, Sean. Uh, my name is Giovanni Martinez. Uh, thank you for this. Just, just quickly. So... I think it's related to what Jake was mentioning, but I really would like to understand or learn a little bit more about your experience inside such a big corporation and having, let's say, an entrepreneurial mindset, seeing yeah. some areas where you can find some shortcuts. So what were you thinking? Were you getting stressed about that in inability to be very be, be very flexible and so on, or what was going through your mind? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be um, as transparent as, as as possible without trying to you know throw you know any organization or whatever out of the bus, right? But uh, so you know, I've kind of been a startup guy a lot of my life. I I like small companies. I like starting new things. I um, you know, bigger organizations they're a little bit slower, and it's like you've heard that phrase like that's not the way we do it around here. You know, this is like I never want to hear that. Like that is a sign, you know, for me, I'm like, I'm done with you. I said, I don't care how it's been done. I was, we want to, let's critical thinking, right? We don't learn enough critical thinking skills in this world. Okay. So let's, let's think about the problem and let's figure out a, a great way to go solve it. So uh, it, it, I had actually, when, when I was before Kaiser, I was working for this, this integrator and they were a customer of the integrator. So I had been exposed to them and I got to know a couple of people and I was helping them with some projects and, you know, it became one of those things like, um, you know, Hey, ooh, you know, you ever looking to leave them, you know, maybe, maybe you come and work for us. And, you know, a funny little aside, uh, I grew up in, in the Bay area, um, and had to move to New Jersey and my wife's from like Southern Cal. I kind of used to sunshine and, decent weather. We moved out there. She wasn't super happy. <laughs> and it just so happened that she was saying, Hey, um, I, I'm traveling a ton, like a ton. Right. She, and it, it was just time to move. Right. So we moved back to California, um, through Kaiser and, uh, I flat out got sold a bill of goods. They're like, Oh yeah, you know, we've got budget, you know, we've got all this stuff, you know, we're, we're just trying to build a team. We've got executive support. And I come in and it's like, are you lying to me? <laughs> I mean, it was, I, I love the guys, right? You know, who, who recruited me, but it was, um, I kind of got sold a bill of goods a, a bit. And in fact, it was like, you know, bigger company, you know, with budget, it's like, okay, what are your standards? Okay. How did you, when you deployed this, like, what, what did you go through? What kind of testing did you go through? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, we, you know, kind of tested it a little bit. Well, where's test lab? Oh yeah, we don't have one of those. Right? <laughs> and in fact, um, by the way, there's we're having a problem at a hospital. I know it's like your second day, but um, can you jump on this 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 call bridge? This you know because we're gonna this truck like there's a bunch of stuff down and we need your help. Wait, it uh, it's like nine p.m. at night. Okay, you know it's fine, right? Things happen, but that became like a normal thing. And I said, wait a second, like what's your plan? Well. The plan was everybody had their their own plan. I mean, they, they didn't necessarily have a plan. Like even the people that you know claimed them. <laughs> See, you know, there was no like real coordination. And um, you know, a lot of times these bigger companies they may have been um, assembled through acquisition. There was a southern the so Kaiser had regions. So Southern Cal, Northern Cal. There's um, you know Georgia, Ohio, um, Hawaii. Uh, Oregon, you know, there's kind of like pockets around and there were these regions that kind of were used to operating autonom autonomously. And I was, you know, part of corporate IT and they're like, oh, corporate guys, you know, we don't want to, you know, get them. Yeah, you know, we just want to kind of keep them off, you know, tell them just what they we want them to know, <laughs> but we're going to kind of do our own thing. Well, um, I had enough of that. And uh, so, you know, the, the, the interesting part was I did a few things, kind of forced, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I kind of laid out a plan. This is what I'd like to do. And, and it went up through leadership uh, at enough of a level to where they said, we're going to set this guy up, get, let him get started, let's watch him, but let's gonna leave, we're going to leave him alone. Kind of kept, you know, some people away uh, from us and what we were doing. So when we laid out that plan, you know, to build a lab, to get a couple of people on the team, you know, we were getting tools, we got manufacturer to do a couple of things. We had a plan for a pilot site and we were going to, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they let it happen. And there's one thing for sure. Um, if you get any success in a larger company, um, let's see, you, you killed it like on a, on a project. There's a bunch of people that hate you. You know, especially the ones, well, like I'm doing wild tech and wait, you know, it, it becomes this like, uh, you know, you just got to ignore them. Um, 
you just got to stay focused on on what you're on what you're doing and the goal that you set out to do and just stay focused. I mean, don't you know make anybody mad intentionally, but you just gotta you know respect them and but just keep rolling, right? You just gotta keep doing your thing. Well, it turned out that uh, there was an executive vice president, basically kind of like a CTO. Um, I met him a couple times, and there were a couple things that you know uh, kind of helped them get out of it, get a, get out of a jam. I had no idea, but behind the scenes, he was knocking down walls and barriers that were there that I was just kind of young and dumb going about my thing, you know, just, uh, you know, focused and no idea there's, you know, people removing, you know, some barriers uh, because they knew, I, you know, they had to fix this wireless problem and, you know, you get all of the people internally that, you know, you know, it, it's like, I give the analogy. You know, we're, we all decide to go down sidewalk and go this direction. And there's a bunch of people throwing tacks on the sidewalk. So you can't walk very fast or <laughs> very straight. I, I mean, absolutely, I, that is what it felt like. Um, but you have, you'll have your, your champions, call them executive sponsors, um, whatever. Um, figure out how to make a few of them happy. And they will, you know, make sure... Um, you know they'll part they'll they'll part the path a little bit for you. Did, did I answer that question, Giovanni? Yeah, 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 for sure. No, thank you so much. Yeah, great, oh, yeah. It's a great look inside those big companies. Thank you. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um. I, so I uh, in what I do now. So now I'm back in the startup world, right? I kind of uh, I put a check in my box. The big company experience. <laughs> So now I'm like, I feel happier. So the, our customer base, I mean, we do work for, for Stanford, for Duke University Health, UCSF, to, um, you know, Cedar sinai in uh, Southern California, University of Colorado Health, et cetera, right? It, it's, it's, so I get a taste of all these different organizations without being Larry Duke. It's fantastic, actually. So we get to come in and solve a problem and everybody's like, you know, cheering because we solve a problem. And then I get to say, Okay, they let us know when next time you need us. <laughs> right? So it kind of keeps me you know, bogged down. I mean, there's some problems with that model that you've got to keep generating sales and doing those sorts of things. But uh, it's really enjoyable uh, to do that. And you realize, you know, I mentioned some big companies and these big healthcare organizations. Like a lot of these people are dealing with those barriers, just like, you know, like I was, how I was responding to Giovanni, but they, they're frustrated a lot of times. They're, they have a certain amount of budget. Their boss may not appreciate you know, where, you know, their, let's say their manager is saying, we're short on resources. We don't have this expertise. He, I, I need, we need to hire somebody. We need the X, Y, and Z or other ways to solve it. And they don't oftentimes get a chance to do it. So when they, and then by the way, hey, uh, can I, you know, can I go to this conference or can I get this training? So I can get good at something. Yeah, you know what, Jake? That uh, we ran out of budget this year. You know, uh, <laughs> just like, there's all of these things, right? Um, that there's some wonderful aspects of it. I, I actually wouldn't trade the experience for for the world. Um, I really got a lot out. But well, listen, was, Sean, I I know all about big companies telling us that we have or have don't have budget. I think some of the largest times were when I was under the uh, NBC studios and we bought Universal. And then years later, I was at Comcast and we bought NBC Universal. Oh, <laughs> and so whatever you, you absorb or get, whatever you get when you whatever you absorb, or you, right? When you get absorbed or you absorb companies that has a lot of fallout as well. I hear you loud and clear on that checkbox on the big company. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, for some people, it's a, it's a nice, safe lane and they want to stay in that lane and get their 401k and, and yeah. they want to get that health insurance and, and they have their routine. Um, but for some, it doesn't, doesn't work. And, and, and you obviously in what you're doing, um, you know, I'm, this trimester, I'm also teaching a startup class. And part of what we talked about is 
sometimes you find your own lane, you find an opportunity. And it sounds to me like you found an opportunity through this experience that, right? It seems like what you're doing now is because of the opportunity you found, right? Yeah, in part. And I really felt like it gave me a chance to refine um, a model that I thought was just the right way to go about it. Uh, and I got a chance to implement it. When I, and I thought um, it actually get recognition from the industry that like, oh my gosh, if you want to, you know, an example of, of some, some ways to do it right. I mean, we had plenty of things that we didn't do right, right? But comparatively, like I would have put my team up against anybody. Um, and, you know, we had validation like where manufacturers would come in and they're used to dealing with, frankly, a bunch of knuckleheads where people that they're generalists in their job. Most, most people that work in these large organizations and they're saddled with things all across the spectrum. The, the part about working for the larger company was a lot, with more big organization, you, you start getting more and more specialized. And so I, I was able to, you know, re really focus um, and where other companies like the device manufacturers, they're used to coming in and saying, hey, Sean, um, you know, we're going to do some testing on the network. Let me tell you how you need to configure it for our device. And I'd be like, you know, just be respectful, nice, and uh, say, go ahead and hey, let's let's talk about it. They get they didn't even get through the first page, and I'm asking questions. Um, so I, I see that. So you're looking for that feature. Um, wh uh, wh why do you want it enabled? Uh, so I understand. Well, you know, then you know, they gave some some answer. The answer was total crap. <laughs> like, you, you know, you you start asking them. It, you just ask them. You're being respectful, right? And you realize, um, you know, there's some things in there that did, frankly didn't make any sense. But I'm just being nice, right? And, and say, well, hey, let's 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 go test it, and we find out, you know. Um, the problem wasn't wasn't on on the network side. I mean, we'd have all kinds of problems we'd find with devices. They come in and they're just you know kind of arrogant. You know they're used to being smarter in, in their area, uh, which you know oftentimes they are. I mean, not taking anything away from, it, but um, far from perfect. Um, <clears throat> so it, there was a lot of recognition that like, hey, Kaiser really does seem to have a plan. There is a standard. They do this little thing called testing. Uh, before they deploy, and the, the more you get along in your career, yeah, people don't do that. Um, I, I'm a, I'm big on. Um, I don't like to get phone calls when stuff's broke, because you know, I, I'm my, it's my wife's birthday tonight, uh, and taking her out to dinner. I don't want that interrupted, so I'd rather spend a little bit more time up front to make sure it's going to work. So. I can enjoy a wonderful evening with my wife and I and my kids, right? And that's kind of my philosophy. Like it just simple. Like I, it, it's just common sense to me. But rarely people do this. And I'm not saying it's easy though either, because you go, gosh, well, how do I test this? Right? It's not these. It's not always obvious, right? You have to be a domain expert. Um, I don't say expert. You have to have domain expertise. But once you start learning an area. You, you start figuring out, you know, you make friends with people and you start calling them and you say, hey, uh, can I ask you a quick question? Um, I'm doing this thing. Does this sound right? Uh, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And they were like, you know, Sean, you're, that's not right. You know, you need to do this. And like, that, that's amazing, right? To get that kind of feedback. And then, you know, hopefully they say, yeah, yeah, you're getting um, less crappy every time you call me, right? It's getting better and better, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what your plan is. So, you know, you go down this road, uh, you, and you, you start to get recognized that like, hey, these guys are, you know, really putting a lot of effort into this. And here's an example. Uh, I got involved with a standards organization in healthcare. It's called AMI, um, AAMI. Um, and they they set standards around um, like medical devices and their, their, their goal is to try to make, um, make it safe. Right, to, to use technology in healthcare. So there's guidance documents and things they try to do. So I got involved with this organization. Um, in fact, one of the people at Kaiser was part of this and pulled me into it. And then they started this group around, around wireless. Well, <clears throat> there's, 
you talk about, you know, Jake, did I validate something of why I'm doing what I'm doing today? Uh, this was actually a moment for me. So I was asked to participate in this because they wanted to hear how is Kaiser doing this? Why are you not having the problems that some of these other organizations are having? And this was actually the opening panel of, of a, at the FCC headquarters in Washington, D.C. And it was jointly sponsored by the FDA. And it was a whole bunch of people. You see Tom Wheeler, who was the FCC chairman at the time. You know, I thought, oh, wow, you know, this is, I'm in the room, right? I'm with the people. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, and a whole bunch of, you know, there were panel after panel after panel. And, you know, a lot of friendly faces you see from a lot of the same events. But, you know, we spent the entire day talking about what the heck we're going to do about making wireless more reliable and how we're going to have better testing. And we had all the manufacturers there. We had major healthcare organizations and like, you know, top, top, I mean, all of the who's who in this. At the end of the day, I was with, you know, a couple of the folks that I'm part of this organization. I looked at them and I said, what did we just accomplish? And they look at me and they're like, yeah, like we talked, we talked about the problem. <laughs> but there was like, you know, the, you know, people are competing interests, right? You know, there's some people that are trying to put their corporate name in there and, you know, some things, but there wasn't a damn solution to this problem by the end of this. And I literally looked at him and I said, that's it. Um, it's time for me to leave Kaiser. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a company. And so there's sometimes those moments in life. I mean, is that scary? Yeah. Um, have I done it before, though? Do I know that? Yeah. You know, uh, so I've been, um, uh, you know, I, I guess that's a, I've been through that fear before, but um, it was time. And so it was actually this moment, but it, 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 but my point really around all this was it's, it's recognition. When you put your heart into something and when you specialize, and I guess that's a theme that I'm talking about a lot is um, the benefits of specialization is be really good at like something specific. And my goodness, I mean, what it starts to lead to. And when I went to go start my company this time versus the other times when I had uh, yeah, I had some successes, but ultimately failures in the end, right? It's all about sales and cash flow and all these other things. Wonderful experiences. Failures are, 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 are what make you who you are and what makes you successful. Um, but this time around, it's like I, I knew so many people. Like people on the manufacturer side and people on different healthcare systems side, because you go to these like customer conferences, like, like a, hosted by a manufacturer, and you get to meet all these other people. So I, like I kind of already knew. Oh, I'm gonna call Calvin over here at uh, you know at uh, <laughs> you know here. I'm gonna call you know Sally over here. You know, so I knew all these people that I was gonna call. Helped immensely, right? And it was that network. So through just doing the best job I could at something and being specialized, I became recognized in it which got me a network of people that I knew, which kind of led to, you know, now I could go out on my own and, you know, have a little less hardship than it is starting you know, when you ever start a company. So anyway, let's go on. So I think I've covered some of these things, but in terms of reflection, <coughs> and uh, Giovanni was asking about this, and the, the contrast of a large company versus a small company. In a small company, you can do all kinds of things. Um, you never have enough time to do one thing, you know, very well. Um, but you, gosh, it's it's a wonderful experience, and I encourage all of you to go work for some small companies, maybe even work for some startups, because your exposure to all these different things is going to be fantastic. I it's like my uh, uh, my 18, 18 year old daughter right now; she has to make a decision. You know, she's first year in in college, and she doesn't know what she wants to do. Um, and she's one of the few, one of the few out of the three that actually says, hey, dad, what do you think? Like, she asked that. Like, oh, cool. I could have enough chance to. <laughs> so she, did, you know, she's not quite sure what she wants to do. Um, so I said, uh, doesn't matter what it is. Just do something. Like, I, so what, do what? Dad, I don't care. Like, pick something. And then you got to go do that thing. And then you got to be looking around. Oh, what's that? Hey, boss, can I, can I help with that? Oh my gosh, you know, I need help with that. I'd love for you to help with that. So then you learn a little bit about that. Then you, but you don't know what it looks like until you're standing on that grass 
once you stand on that grass, then you go, oh, and I can now see these flowers. I can see that, you, you know, you can't see it from this far away. Just go do something. Go fail at it. Because again, I love my failures. And I try to encourage my kids, like failures, um, it, you know, it, it's, you got to catch them early, but uh, before they become huge problems. But failures are how you learn. And, and failures have to do with not just, you know, not implementing something right. It's political failures. I have said the dumbest things that I would love to take back <laughs> that n did not endear me with my colleagues at, at times. And, you know, you learn <laughs> from them. But that's the good thing is you can always go to another company, right? Or you can always go to a different organization. Um, you can always go back and apologize later and never be, um, uh, you know, sometimes I've been afraid to do that. Whenever I have, they said, yeah, you know what? I was pretty upset with you, but, you know, time has healed that. But it's interesting now that you're coming back to me and like you held that for all this time. And in fact, you're coming back to me now and saying that, yeah, I was a knucklehead. I said the wrong thing. Here was what I think in my mind and I had nothing to, I mean, it was just totally off and I just want to evolve. And there's just some people that I thought, you know, I was a little afraid to call them, but I call them right now and they pick up the phone and say, hey, Sean, how you doing? Right? So it, it's just, um, believe it or not, you know, I could be an introvert. You know, I have been, I mean, when I was in school, I did sports and, and all that other stuff. I you know, kind of label a jock at some level. But once I started, like, getting into the computer science area, I kind of started, you know, you kind of become a victim of, uh, of the culture. Yeah, I was getting that. Um, and he, you know, you're respectful, you know, kind of come into a corporate environment. You don't want to start blazing the doors open, right? You, you want to step in slowly. Um, but, uh, just talk to people, right? Ask questions. Questions are an enormous instrument. They open up a dialogue and it doesn't, in curiosity, I'll tell you, you know, why am I doing this today? I'm doing this, and I'm not getting anything out of it, but it, you know, extrinsically, intrinsically, I'm getting a lot out of this. I love to see, you know, you know, all of your young faces and the, what you're what you're going on to. And if I could impart a little something and put a smile on your face, that was that was time well spent. Um, so, you know, those people love to have these conversations. So I think I'm actually running a little long. So let me try to just make sure there are any key pieces to this. But um, quick thing, most people just do their damn job. They are afraid to talk to people. They kind of huddle and they're in their blinders on in their cubicle. They kind of scuttle into work and you know, kind of look up. Um, and they're not creating a dialogue. And, and, and some people just don't care either. And, and that's, I'm not taking anything away from that. Jake, you said it earlier. Some people just go work for somebody and their real passion is what they do on, on the side. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but those people serve a purpose too, right? They just want to do their part and get out. But um, there's an opportunity if I would encourage you to try to seize if you can <clears throat> take a leadership role in, in some way. And there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. My goodness is that it in short supply. Leadership is, comes in many forms, and there's every example of success of every form out there, right? Of the shy introvert type to the total extrovert, you know, get up on stage and do it all. <clears throat> people have built amazing companies with all of those styles. So there's, there isn't one. But by learning a domain, um, you'll get self-confidence. That's like the first part of the recipe, right? For you to be able to speak a little bit and feel more comfortable in a room talking about it and, you know, being respect, start first starting off, you know, kind of not making a lot of eye contact, but then start picking your head up a little bit more, talking more. And once you get recognized, well, hey, we're going to bring in, you know, Kelvin into this next meeting because the last meeting, you know, you really said a couple of things that we, that we didn't understand, right? So it, you know, that you get pulled into that stuff when you start to, to share some of your knowledge and expertise. But my goodness is leadership in short supply. And, and that could be a leader on a project, 
it could be um, one of the leaders on, you know, for a part of a project. There's ways to start this in a very, um, in a very small way. And if it's not you, then who else is going to do it? That's, remember that point, please. Remember, and when you're thinking about, well, should I say anything? You know, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to you know, make anybody mad. But if it's not you, then who? Because avoid, some, 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 somebody will emerge. <clears throat> and it might as well be you. Um, now I'm trying, this was my attempt to try to bring this back at home for uh, Jake and the focus your class and what you all do and what you're studying. Uh, I'm going to just try to rifle through this. And um, so, you know, just like my good friend says, Sean, you have a hard time clearing your throat in less than 500 words. So here we are with four minutes left and <laughs> still got a couple of slides. Um, bigger topic. Why do they take your time? What's that? I, I said, take your time okay. to make Very sure good. you, we want you to breathe safely and be in good health. We Thank you. Uh, why deploy technology? <clears throat> and obviously I'm kind of referencing the wireless stuff and, you know, and we all deal with it every day, right? You, you see this, so let's say you, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you might have a familiarity with certain technologies, but when a lot of organizations are at the buy stuff, like they're buying infrastructure, they're, they're you know, because you people need to connect to networks or they need uh, ways to store stuff, right? <clears throat> um, it'll, it's really easy to get caught up in, <clears throat> well, gosh, I'm just going to help deploy that. And that's okay. You could absolutely need to help deploy that. But <clears throat> there's more to the story here. This is, you know, talk about the critical thinking, you know, skills and, and the lack of it that exists in, in this world. Uh, and I, you know, when I was saying this earlier, I saw Jake, I saw you doing this. Um, I want to impart this to you, that it's really easy to get caught up in a project and get so focused on the minutia, like, you know, the little, the little details that we don't oftentimes ask ourselves, who asked us to do this? Sometimes it's like super obvious, right? But let's say it's some software program that you know wants that some somebody is telling you to to deploy or says needs to get deployed. Ask your ask this question to ask the question of of trying to define what problem were you trying to solve by buying this? Who are the stakeholders behind this this solution that, or this this technology that's being deployed? And and how uh, how are they affected by this problem? Who are the user personas? And I don't know if this is a term you use, um, you know, in, in what you do, but the user persona is like who are the actors? Who are the people, co the consumers of the thing? So in this case, the technology. Um, so in what I do in healthcare, it's nurses, it's physicians, it's uh, you know, there's ancillary support staff. If we're down to facilities people to what they call EVS, or environmental services, the people go clean the rooms. So those are personas that I go after. In fact, you can even take a nurse and say, well, there's the one that's like been doing it for 35 years that maybe isn't so technology, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> familiar. And then you have the one that just came out of college, right? That's like, like, I got this. Like, I, you put something in front of that, ner that nurse and they, they're gonna know what to do. So define your personas and, you know, so if you're thinking about deploying something, what's the problem? Who's affected by this problem? Who are the people that are going to be using it? What requirements like need to be like, what are, what are some requirements that need to have to come out of the solution from a business level? Not like it needs to, when you, when you do X, Y needs to happen, like technically, that doesn't matter. Like that's, you need to understand the bigger business problem. And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, what we're dealing in healthcare all the time, they're saying, hey, we want to deploy a bunch of these things, these smartphones. Cool. Why? Well, you know, we've got this application we want to roll out. Okay. What's the name of the application? Okay. It's from this. This one's called blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, who are the users of this? 
oh, that's going to be nursing. Um, okay, is it going to be anybody else other than nursing? Yeah, we, you know, we're going to have some physicians on it too. Okay, but what about other? Oh, oh no, 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 they're not. Okay, well, um, what what is the key issue that you're trying to solve by doing this? Is this like um, helping to make things more efficient? They're like, oh, I'm glad you asked. And they start explaining the the like the details of like how how the care coordination is going to change and you know what this application does. So I'm like, oh, I thought you just wanted to deploy some phones. If had I not asked the question, I wouldn't have known why you why you wanted to do all this stuff. And I'm telling you right now, people don't ask this question enough. Like the big picture is lost. Once you get through that, you can start getting into okay. Um, now that I get all that, I'm going to think about as we're implementing this, let's think about the functional details of like when we do X, Y needs to happen every time, right? Um, it, it, it's, that gets, it's much more tactical once you start getting down to that level, but it's all guided by asking the right questions and understanding who in the heck is using it and how they would use it. Too often we have this issue of solutions looking for problems and i'll tell you an example this is this company that so i'm doing all this stuff with uh, this new wireless technology it's called cbrs it's like doing it's like a cellular technology that a hospital can deploy in the room and you have these manufacturers that are saying hey, hey uh, um, so you know we have this thing you know that it's amazing technology and i said cool uh how do you propose it's you know the hospitals are going to use this they're like, uh, I, I don't know. I was hoping you'd tell me. <laughs> I mean, I don't quite say it like that. But my goodness, there's so many people that make technology. They're like, I just thought this was cool. Or, I, or hey, something came out of what we were doing. I think there's an application for this. <clears throat> and what I just described to you in the beginning of the slide is, yeah, somebody bought something. And that was the, the scenario we went through. But let's say you're designing something from scratch. Somebody says, hey, I want to do some media, I want a, um, you know, a video on this, or, or a, I, I want a graphic design for, for, for this, it's, <clears throat> hopefully you're all taught this stuff, but my goodness in technology, like we're not. <laughs> and, and it's much more common to just um, be heads down focused in, in the details. So frequent occurrences, what comes out of that is wasted purchases. I'll give you an example. I was just said, I don't want to throw the organization out of the bus, but it's one of our current customers. They said, I, the, the IT people that I was dealing with saying, oh yeah, we, we're deploying these smartphones, they're working fine. Oh yeah, I was talking to somebody else in your organization, they said they weren't. I'm like, no, oh, we like, we don't get any tickets from this. And a trouble ticket, right? Like think about somebody's support ticket. Like, yeah, no, everybody's happy. I said, do you mind if I go into just go to the hospital and check in with a couple of people where, you know, just, I just want to see it. Um, so I go in there and I say, I introduce myself and, and I get to the, to the charge nurse for that department. They're like, oh, you talk about the smartphones, oh, these phones? So she goes over to the drawer, she opens up, she opens up the drawer and it's stacked full, it's like 35 phones. Oh, these? Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't use these. So they're not, they're not submitting trouble tickets, right? <laughs> so they spent all this money on the phones and then the software to put on it, rolled it out, you know, did training and like, they don't work. So they just don't want to go, but screw you people, I'm just going to go off and do my thing. Cause I already know how to do that before, you know, I, like I knew how to do it before. So it's a ton of wasted purchases. And uh, there's a DVD series called IT Gone Wild that uh, joke here, but uh, you know, we, we tend to get focused into the, like this like minutia that is just like esoteric. And like I would like in the wireless area, or let's say these phones, you know, we say we need to lock down this uh, this feature because we don't want the you you know they give some reason, some IT or security person, and in you know when we were called in to help fix this problem because they kept having this block like they they couldn't when they launched the app they you know they had to put a security pin and do and like they're dealing with patients when they get an event they just want to be able to pick it up and but IT is saying like ah, we need to do this. Well, you connect the dots, right? Well, how are they using it in the context of the, like, we tend to focus on the dumbest things. Like all of these, like maybe this, there's this feature that the manufacturer came out with. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'd love to implement that somewhere. Why? Like, does it solve the business problem? Or is it 
like putting more tax on the sidewalk as, as the people are going to try to use their job, right? It happens all the time. It, but we're, they're, they don't ask the question why they're even doing what they're doing, and they're not thinking about the big picture. And it's just feature creep, right? They, they're doing these things that nobody asked them to. But maybe the manufacturer released a feature that is good for retail, but maybe not for healthcare or vice versa, you know, wasted time and money. I love this, this graphic. Uh, there's many variants of this, but I don't know if any of you have seen this. Okay, yeah, so I'll let you leave with it, shake your head. This is what it feels like on a normal corporate project. And, and Jake, help me out here, but probably most of the time. Like, this is a typical corporate project to me. Everybody's in their own little silo. And they're like, well, you know, I just do this. And I don't want to really care. You know, I'm just doing this, right? And this is how, you know, the, what the customer really wanted in the end, he just wanted a tire swing. But <laughs> it's hilarious, right? You, you, you see these, and there's plenty of different versions of it, right? I just picked one that had high enough resolution <laughs> that, I could, that I could share. But this is the norm. So the big picture here, um, this is the big picture. I think the problem in that one, Sean, the problem in this is that, you know, one thing that you're saying that is absolutely critical is no matter whether or not you're just in a job just to get through the day and do your thing on the side, you still should be asking questions. You should still should be volunteering. You still should know what your te teammates are doing, right? Because if you don't, you'll get passed over and maybe you won't stay at that comfortable job, yeah. <laughs> right? You have to be an active participant while you're there. Yes. Not only will you be better employed, you'll actually be more helpful and you'll enjoy your job more. I was so going to say that you might actually have a little fun. number of reasons. Plus you you'll from you'll enjoy your job. And then when it when you have this graph or this 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 illustration, you actually on number one or number two would build a tire, right? Because you would know what you're yeah. doing and you know what your teammates are doing and you'd be able to lead an effective team. So I love this. I love this as well. And I've seen it before. I do love it. Yeah. But it yeah, never all of what you're me. saying is. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I think I'm towards the end here. But the big picture, again, I'm reinforcing this. Um, so I, you know, think about my journey. I, I went through this kind of this generalist to becoming a specialist in an area, getting known for something, and then getting pulled in to, to help with it. I never lose sight of this, though. And this is what's allowed me to be an effective executive in, in being able to talk with customers at the, at, with the executives at their level because they don't care about the minutia. Um, they just want it. They just want the damn tire swinging on a tree. That's all they care. And who's going to help me do it? And so when we get engaged on, you know, we're implementing wireless networks and we're doing a security thing, I never lose sight of this here, this, uh, what the customer really wants. <clears throat> so you, it's your job to go figure it out. And, and Jake, you, you said it perfectly. Just ask questions, be nice about it, you know, uh, but force the conversation. Um, define the problem statement. You'll find 90 plus percent of the time, it's not defined. Or if it is, maybe it's like a three page document. No, no, no. One sentence. If you can. Unless you get away with two or three sometimes. But one sentence, arti clearly articulated. Um, oh my gosh, this galvanizes teams together. And it allows you to, as you get two months into the project, and we, you kind of go off on, on a tangent, how is this helping to solve the problem? Right? You just because you defined it and you got everybody agreed to it on top of that. And it talked about multiple techniques to force it, right? Just, you know, you, it can, you can find a style that fits your personality, whether you're more introverted or more extroverted or all of the, all that applies. Just be, you know, respectful about it, right? <laughs> of course, because nobody, nobody likes a disrespectful person, but just never lose sight of it. Continue to validate along the way and <clears throat> use the power of observation. So in design and, and when you put something out there, um, I always, so whether it's a wireless network to a software application, or maybe it's a website that we put out for, for X, Y, and Z, 
we observe the first users of this for for a fixed for a period of time and we take those before we start to go shotgun to a whole bunch of people we take those in their early observations and we reincorporate that back in and make those tweaks um, and if you have like a bug tracking system we actually track those as bugs like were there usability issues or maybe somebody i we thought we were communicating the right thing but then we ask them hey what did you how did you interpret this it's like the user testing um, it's the power of observation that is your it's your golden feedback loop so there we go i've uh i went through all my slides hopefully uh let's open it up to any other questions or clarifications did this uh <laughs> what's this thank you can everybody hear me by the way Hey, Sean, you can you up. hear me and everyone hear me okay? Sometimes we break up, but most of the time, yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully people can hear me. I think it's something that you're listening to Sean. He's talking about something that, sure, it's in a specific industry, but everything he's talking about is relatable to any industry. Yes. There are skill sets that are transferable. So everything that we're talking about here matters. Whether you're going to go into healthcare or not, or you're thinking about mobile, it doesn't matter. All of it matters because any sort of situation that you encounter at a big, small, whatever you're at, these are things that are real. Um, do people have any questions for Sean? And Sean, I really appreciate it. I know on, on your Saturday night, um, you have a lot of things to do, and, and I promised you you'd be done by seven. That's okay. Um, um, so we're good. I, I'm, I'm happy to stay as do, long as do, uh, do people have any quick questions? Yeah, uh, uh, Jake, I have a question. Okay, please ask. Yeah, hi, Sean. First of all, this was a very insightful talk, so thank you so much for this. Uh, I have a question for you. So. Uh, because you know this, uh, we talked about the wireless technology. So these days we see wireless technology almost everywhere. Especially wherever we have a workforce, you know there is wireless technology required. I would so actually I say actually, all of you are connected via Wi-Fi right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I actually wanted to know uh, your company right now uh, is focused on the medical or the clinical you know, industry. So why so? I mean, because it is required everywhere. So is it very different, the deployment or implementation there is very different from other areas or industry, or uh, maybe is it uh, in your future plans to uh, move in other uh, industries? I love the well? question. Love the question. Um, I will tell you, <laughs> okay. when I start, said, hey, I'm going to I'm going to start this company called Clinical Mobility, we're going to focus on wireless and healthcare. And they're, you know, you tell this to your good friends, and they say, uh, there's a couple of them who are like, wow, I could see like healthcare really needs it. And then there are some other really good friends who are like, are you dumb? Like, yeah. why would you limit yourself to just healthcare? And I said, ah, great question. Um, <clears throat> when I walk into, you know, I talk to a, a customer in the in the in the healthcare space, I've seen every device that that they have deployed there. Their software applications that they're deploying on those devices. I pretty much know all of them. In fact, I know the roles in healthcare. I know, you know, within a step down unit versus an OR versus an ED, you know, I, I know those roles and I generally know the use cases. And, and I could talk a lot, you know, ad nauseum about a whole bunch of these things. And it allows, so as a specialist in this technology area, I know how to apply it and make it effective for those roles. What in, so let's say you, you're at your company, you're in charge of a project and your, your boss said, go out and get three bids from three different companies. Uh, we need some wireless expertise. You go out and um, two of them are from, you know, these companies that, yeah, they know wireless, you know, they claimed it. it looks like their, you know, proposal looked good, but then there's this other one that's like, well, gosh, they, they, all they do is in healthcare. Huh. So they probably know, hmm. Right. So it's a it's a distinction for us. You know, uh, we um, 
you know, you, you, you're, you're going into a smaller market. From a business context, it's a decision. It's not, some would argue it's a bad decision. But, you know, so when, when you're developing a product, you want the biggest market size as possible, like if you're doing a startup. This is, um, I decided to, the actual company name is in telecom. I don't, we don't operate as it generally. But when I started the company, we created, you know, in telecom, but I just did doing what's called a doing business as, a DBA, as clinical mobility, because I wanted to start in healthcare and be known for it, because I thought getting known and it was a little bit easier for me because I already had all, all my relationships there. But there's a specific you know, business model that I wanted to do. I want to do it here. And then I want to do it next in education, next in manufacturing, next in whatever. But so the company name's in telecom. So I had, the plan is to go broader. But again, I, you know, following the theme in my career where I, I wanted to focus in and to be known for something, and to be like, hey, um, you know, in fact, there was a buddy of mine just went to LinkedIn uh, and I, he was working at another company and we get we had, like pulled in there. Um, yeah, Lawrence Livermore Labs, you know, there's a project going on there right now and uh, Gap, like, I mean, we're getting pulled into other things. We just operate some telecom when we do that, right? Because people move around, right? Uh, hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, thank you so much. I also have a follow-up question uh, regarding this. So uh, I just wanted to know your company right now, is it working like a ERP company or a reseller or do you have manufacture your own products supporting the Wi-Fi technology or wireless? Yeah, we're doing services and we, okay. we've written our own software to, um, to do those, to automate a lot of that stuff. So we, I actually have developers, you know, doing things and, and actually interesting, you know, just from a business perspective, um, it's something that nobody else has. And so we're, uh, we're doing all of the, the business planning to spin that out and to be a separate company because, you know, we're solving our problems for ourselves and be more efficient and more cost, you know, we're actually able to do it uh, cheaper, faster, and more consistent every time. But with the, the rest of the market needs it. So it's a nice way to have a little spin off. So it's uh, predominantly services today. Okay, so you also need to collaborate with companies like Cisco or Juniper or Aruba Networks or Meraki for their products where the software is being used? Very closely. Um, we get, um, there's, so we're not a reseller and that's longer story, but um, we're deep partners with them to where, uh, let's say, let's say whether it be we have a customer that has Aruba or Cisco and it's gone sideways, when we get brought in, um, you know, we already have a bunch of relationships in there and it, uh, through some of these projects, the really bad ones, you tend to get to the, the, like the top tier of the escalation. And so we get these really tight relationships. Like for example, uh, Apple, you know, they're doing a bunch of these deployments of, of, uh, of uh, and deployment in, in the healthcare. So one of my friends that I knew, uh, he said, man, it's just me. And we did this partnership with Cisco. This was years ago. And said, hey, would you be a subcontractor to us? And anytime we get this, you know, to do an iPhone readiness assessment is what they called it. In healthcare, can I just call you right and do it? And I said, yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity, right? Uh, something that, and so the partnerships, I get a ton of business through the Cisco's Aruba's, the software vendors, the device manufacturers, medical device manufacturers, I get a ton of business uh, through those relationships. Okay, that's it. So my last, I have actually a lot of questions, uh, but I know we are running short on time. There's a few other hands uh, up too, but yeah. So yeah, last small yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, have, start... oh, we have, we have, can we, can we just, let's make sure we get the other two people who yeah, have their hands yes. up. Yeah, they will come back. Yeah, so let's just the last question. Lila first, we're going to go to Lila and then Javier. And then if we have time, we'll come back to you, okay? Okay, sure. I just want to make Thank sure that we get folks here. I'll okay, so go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sean, thank you so much for your uh, talk. Uh, so, uh, harking back to your uh, slide where you're talking about solutions versus technology and how you uh, keep asking questions about why specifically we are doing whatever that is being done but oftentimes you're just handed down a, a framework or a requirement and it's just because it is the latest buzzword or it's just because they want to do it 
or yeah, because yeah. competition is doing it some such thing typical case of you know if you have a hammer everything looks like a nail kind of a thing uh, but how do you deal with it and then how do you dig deeper and sometimes you can walk away from a project but then oftentimes you know it's just handed to you and uh, how how do you how do you figure out how to get past that reason yeah there's um gosh um i i have done that successfully and very unsuccessfully in the past uh so like uh let's say it's you know ai ml you hear that all kind of you know we, we need to implement that's, that that's one of the very yeah right so you say, fantastic yes let's do that but okay can you help me understand what we're doing what problem we're solving and who's the user and let, let's like let's document that and then and then you start going down the road of of implementing the thing or solving the problem, but you don't have to do that stuff phase one. You can build a roadmap to, to get there. And that's probably what I use more than anything. And then oftentimes what happens is, you know, they can say they're doing it, right? Sometimes we're, you're starting a project that's going to incorporate it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be there right after that, right? It, uh, but it could be in the roadmap, right, or the plan. Or, but it allows you to, to define the architecture. As such, to to know when you're gonna when that when you're gonna enable that function, you're not gonna break the architecture, right? So you know, knowing that that's the direction you're they want to go, um, that's that's how I dealt with it. Thank you. All right, Leva. Javier. Hey, hey, Sean. Uh, thanks for all the knowledge sharing with us. Um, I'm really interested about this uh, networking communication backend because it's what allow us to do anything right now. Digital service, I think. Um, so after you have designed the network and deployed your solution to the customers, because what I see from your business is just you don't focus just on the network, but the use cases for each one of the end users. Yeah. Um, what is your relationship with your customers? Are you still keep in touch of providing customer support in case they find have a problem, or you perform monitoring for them? Or you, in this industry, in the healthcare industry, they have their own. Uh, companies that are checking the networking and managing the networking because of, from what I see or what you have said is nurses and doctors and people working in the area they, they don't want to care about this networking solution they don't they care just at all. use it right it's to work yeah exactly so do you offer something like a service where you can just be there when they need you or that's something outside the scope <laughs> of your business yeah the politics are interesting um so there are people that that's their job to do that already so it's called the it department right and they uh they don't want to expose that they have any wrinkles right they want to be i i've got it, i've got this you know to their boss you know like no no, no we you know we, we know how to do this the reality is they might they might say that in the meeting when the boss is there but then when, when they're gone they're like hey can you help me you know this is i need some help doing this because we don't have enough time or you know whatever um Yes. So the, the business model is really around. Um, so I learned something when I was deploying a thousand buildings. Think about um, you started building one and you get to building 100 building, you know, by time you, it's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You get to the end, you're like, oh, the paint's starting to fall off. Right. I got to start all over again. Right. So it's like it never ends. Like It's this constant cycle. So. It's what I call life cycle management. It's maintaining the infrastructure. It's like a car, you pull it off the car lot and then, you know, after 100,000 miles, you know, the wheels start falling off, right? It's maintaining your infrastructure is really hard. So that's one of the things that I thought there was a business opportunity to help organizations manage the life cycle because it was actually one of the hardest and most expensive problems that I had when I was on the customer side. So yeah, that's, uh, I thought there was a good business opportunity. In there and some customers recognize that there that there is value in having a company out and not and some people don't um but as things are starting to get more and more cloud driven application as a service you know network as a service people realize yeah why wouldn't i just go to you and then you just handle all of this it's this evolution that's like kind of slowly taking place did that answer the question over here yes and one 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 more thing about sure. this um do you think every hospital or medical institution will need their own IT or at some point maybe clinical mobility will just take that away from them because they make a solution that they can control and monitor. Yeah, people are afraid of, of um, being exposed and that they're going to lose their job. That's the common most, most that's the most common thing uh, to worry about. So there's this like, you know, you have to develop these, these soft skills that uh, 
um, size up the person you're talking to and knowing who's around them. Maybe when you're having certain conversations, you might have different conversations when you go to lunch together or take them out to have a drink or versus, you know, being in the office with 20 people, like in a, in a boardroom. Back when we used to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the it, it, it's when you realize that they're faced with a whole bunch of challenges and their their job, they don't just get all the, you know, 40 hours a week to go just do the thing that they're being asked to do. There's all this administrative crap that takes up their day, right? There's these other things, these uh, going in for all these other meetings, there's a trivial tasks and project managers are always asking to do stuff. And you're like, hey, I, I need to get this work, done, this real work done. I should be doing, but I don't have enough time to do it. And, you, you, and once you get further along in your career, you realize, you know, that's kind of the the norm. And you know, I need if I can bring in some outside help, um, whether we hire them or we engage with them as a as contractors or a, or a separate company through a, like a statement of work. Like, I'm going to be able to get my work done. And you didn't talk about you never do anything yourself. You do things that when you accomplish something, most of the time it's done with a group of people, right? And like the biggest things of, in the world that you accomplish are usually done as a team. And when you realize, when you put yourself in a, you know, be comfortable and know that your boss is asking you to own something and just to make sure it gets done, ideally, and just say, hey, this is what I need to do that job. Is I'd love some help with blah, 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 blah. Fine, fantastic. We have the budget, and you know, we can go do that. Right? Um, sometimes you don't, but you say, "Hey, I told you I couldn't do this if if I need some help because you you want to do X, right? X, Y, and Z." So that's gonna X is gonna take you know three hundred hours, and you want this done wait by when? So you know the math doesn't work, right? I mean, you kind of work your way there. So if it you don't get the budget to get it done, it's not getting done, right? And it's not like you're gonna lose your job over it. So that hopefully there was something there that was useful to the tool. No worries. Thank you, Sean. Yes, sir. Any other questions? The hands were very helpful. And I think we can circle back to that last question for you now. Right? We have one right, so <laughs> question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Sean, uh, I had one question. I wanted to know your viewpoint as well. So the certifications we have, for example, the CCI wireless, uh, specifically for the wireless one. So do you think these certifications are really helpful and do you also recommend these or what are your views on these? Fantastic question. Um, so I've gone both ways. I used to hate certifications when, you know, I, um, I, I have a lot of gray hair, right? So when I was in the 90s going through the dot-com days and, you know, there were a bunch of people with these Microsoft certifications, Nova, you know, whatever, and these people would walk around. You know, the reality was you could get you can download questions, test questions, and you can go sit the test and you can pass it. There was these paper certified people. I was sick of it. I was talking to people because I, I was like, I was running a business at the time. I didn't have time for it. I just do it. I just, I just do basic work. So I'm like, I, I could do it. Like, yeah, maybe I'd learn something. Yeah, but I'll get to that because I'm too busy doing work. And you get these people walking in with these certifications and you ask them a question and it's like, they don't, they don't, can't answer the question. The next question, they can't answer the question. And then I, then I, I just got, I detested all these certifications for a while. And then I, when I got into wireless, I, um, I sat this, uh, I was with, I was on an airplane from New Jersey to Spokane, Washington, and this guy handed me this book, a buddy of mine. And I started, I started thumbing through this book and it was like this certified wireless network administrator. It's like the lowest level. I was like captivated. I'm like, this is fantastic. I mean, this is great reading. So I, I went through it and I did the certification and it, I failed the test. I'm like, I read this book. Like, you know, really, I'm not doing the work. I think I know what I'm doing, but actually I didn't. You know, I, thought, I only thought I did, right? <laughs> but, so I sat the test, I failed. I go, ooh, now I respect it a little bit more. Uh, so then I, I, you know, I passed it and then continued on through the professionals and then, they, then the expert. These were humbling tests. Um, in fact, one of them is what they call the CWAP. It's a Certified Wireless Analysis Professional. And you literally have to know the 802.11 protocol. It's like Ethernet with 802.3. It's the layer two protocol. And about what every bit does in the header and like when you would use control frames, like, like you have to get, like roll up your sleeves. You have to know that protocol deep. 
I was so afraid to go take that test. I, I read the book three times front to cover, or front, yeah, front to back. When I went to take it, uh, I passed it the first time. And I actually did pretty well. And I generally kind of suck at tests, frankly. I always kind of like it, just like I overthink it. You know, I, I, I've just never been, a, I, I, could, I know something, but something I can't always test well. For it. So I, I go take this, uh, and then the next level was the, was the expert one. But then when I got the expert one, I was the 54th person to do it, small community. Like there weren't many of these people. So the head guy who created this whole program, the chief technology officer, he called me. He said, hey, I just want to tell you, you you just got your, your number 54 and you know did this whole thing. And I, um, uh, so we talked, it was supposed to be like 20 minute call, it went on for about two hours. And he said, hey, you know that AP test, that CW AP test you passed? He said, that was, um, you know, there were only 27 people who passed it. I went, what? Yeah, I said, it was, a, I mean, talk about an epitome of a business failure for us. You know how much time I put into this thing? And, and no, no, everybody's afraid to take it. Yeah, we only had like, uh, you know, 150 people to sit the test, like to try to take it, but only 27 people passed, right? And you know, I'm like, whoa, wow. Interesting, right? So there's the certifications. Um, I, I, I came on the other side of this, but then there's one last story to this, which hopefully all the rest of you are benefiting from. So when I wrote that in CW, CWDP, the design book, it was the first design book in the industry. There wasn't. So I, I had gone through and got the, the expert you know, level and there wasn't a design. And you know, we're at this, you know, there was like an annual meeting where, you know, a small group of us were getting together, like, hey, we, we want to do this. And Sean, what do you think? You, you interested? And I'm like, I don't know what's involved. Like, I, I mean, how much do I make? Ah, you don't make any of it, right? But uh, hey, it's it's good for your career, right? <laughs> so go through. So I write this curriculum. Um, talk about critical thinking, right? And you think you, you look at the big picture of stuff. I was frankly um, appalled at these people that had these expert level certifications, usually like, like first 30 of them were kind of like, you know, friends of the program. They were the trainers. I'm going to just be honest with you. I was in a room for a week working on the next level of the expert exam. And we literally I took a week off work and spent like, it was 10 hour days. We're going through 300 test questions. And like, we're like really like digging into, you know, analyzing what's right here. And I mean, we're, I'm getting to meet, you know, you really get to know these people. And there was a, in a room of 30 people, there were probably three that I thought actually knew what they were doing. Some of these people were trainers. They're actually really good at training. They're just not really good at, at like knowing uh, the stuff on the fly and not knowing how to react to you know, scenarios. So when I wrote this book, I, I presented the table of contents before we you know, got going and I put these two chapters in there. In fact, I had two goals. I said, we're going to have a, um, a whole section on, on RF, and we're going to really dig into radio frequency and all those, like the, the, the science behind it. And then we're going to focus on client devices. And the president of the organization said, uh, Sean, we don't, we don't do that now. I said, exactly. I said, here's my, here's my problem. And I kind of characterized the room. I said, no offense. Kind of a bunch of useless people in some respects. I mean, I, I love them for what they're some of what they're doing, but for like if we're going to go to an industry where you need to be able to send it, be sent in and be seen as an expert to be able to solve the problem, I want them to know what the heck they're doing because it's like weighing down. You know, the certification I just invested all this time into it's making it kind of useless to me. So, you know, we got a bunch of people walking around like experts, calling themselves experts, and there's a reason why I want these two chapters in, or they, not chapters, they were like sections. And, and they're like, well, you know, that can get a little bit deep and whatever. And I said, here's a, we're either doing this or you're finding another lead author because, you know, this is like, you know, you're donating your time practically. You make a little money, but it's, you're donating your time. Well, he we went along with it. Um, the compromise was only put like three test questions on the actual test. But, but I got, I got three chapters in there that were deep. So to your point, and hopefully that was a beneficial story for the rest of you, but the, um, certifications don't don't mean that much um, at, at some level, but when you get a chance to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, and when you say you have that certification, you're gonna um, if you if you invested your time right and you and you really took it to heart, you're gonna blow them away. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I would definitely like to mention before you yeah, do this was very insightful. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that comment. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the questions as well. Sean, thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. We do something at the end of these conversations, these talks, mm -hmm. where we take a picture with you. All so right. I'm going to take a picture of everybody as their screens on. And so everybody smile. Let's go ahead and do this. Here we go. I'll count down to, uh, I'll do three, two, one. So when I say one, make sure you smile, okay? All right. I'm going to try and channel my inner Hollywood uh, experience on this one. You ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. All right. Um, Sean, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, in, I'm here in Santa Monica, so we'll go, go to a Lakers Warriors I'd love it. game. And I think right now you guys will destroy the Lakers. <laughs> Engine full um, of time. Too bad neither one of us. Exactly. Well, we can certainly appreciate each other. Um, Sean, thank you so much. You've really uh, given, you know, not only a very wonderful insight into a world that a lot of us don't know, but you've actually given us valuable information to take into other industry as well. So that's really a tremendous help and we appreciate you very much. It's an honor. So thank you. And uh, please, Please have a beautiful rest of your evening. Thank you for spending time with us. We're going to spend a little bit of time going over some other issues when you leave, but Very we good. just want to wish you a farewell and a thank you. Pleasure. Please reach out to me on social media too on LinkedIn.